Hey guys, it's Peter Rodrigo. I'm here watching Channa 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 podcast. Join me. <clears throat> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my podcast. We have a special guest today joining all the way from New York City. We have Mr. Peter Rodrigo joining the podcast. Hi Peter. How you doing guys? Nice to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I really appreciate it. So how are you doing Peter? I'm doing all right. Um amid this pandemic, you know, I just took my second covid shot, uh, the final shot and uh, uh working uh in person. I'm a teacher in New York and uh you know, I'm doing all right. Can't complain. Uh you know, just the fact that a lot of shows are not going on. Everything is uh social distancing and uh you know that's it's very rough on all the entertainers i guess around the world i'm sure right so how did the how did the covid uh, personally affected you um i've had about two of my friends relatives uh the first person i knew of was uh a very good uh coach um he used to, i used to see him in the gym all the time when i used to play basketball in high school he used to be around and then i saw i see i used to see him on a reg- on a regular basis and uh come to find out him and his wife went over to uh Puerto Rico for their honeymoon or well their uh re whatever the anniversary and he wound up uh passing getting covid in Puerto Rico passing in uh in isolation which was terrible the guy was the nicest guy very healthy he used to run marathons and and work out on a regular basis it was devastating to the whole Staten Island community he was well known Mr. Karen Obi I mean Mr. Obi his name was so yeah it was that was one and then uh there was another sri lankan um uh local that lived in staten island also that passed away from covid which was you know it, it was terrifying to be honest with you uh you know my father's older um and I wanted everybody to be safe it it was it was devastating in the beginning yeah right. so very scary mhm so how long you been uh, staying in new york i moved uh, to new york in 1988 when i was 11 uh from sri lanka right um and i've been here ever since uh yeah yeah long time <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so how, how when did you last went to sri lanka peter uh i went 3 years ago it was a big family trip um my mother my sister my brother my father and all our relatives really went there for my cousin's wedding and uh me and my father went to promote uh one of my uh singles that I released that year I did some television and radio interviews out in Sri Lanka and my parent my mom and my brother and my sister they were touring the country while we were doing the uh uh television and radio circuit but that was the last time 3 years ago that we went there yeah it was a great time it was a great time right so um Can you tell me a little bit do you remember your childhood back then when you were in Sri Lanka? I I do very vividly. I remember living in Negamboa when I was a toddler and my father used to work in uh, uh be, I believe oh man it was it was a toy toy company and he used to bring me toys all the time. I remember him hiding behind the door and me running after trying to find him to get those little toys and um uh, I remember going to school uh, up to 6th grade I was there. and you know uh, lived in uh, dehivala mm. and yeah commuted me i had a, a a van that that commuted me from from school and back and you know my parents worked obviously my father was doing music and my mom was working as a secretary yeah it was uh, i remember all of that <laughs> even though it was such a long time ago <laughs> so what uh, for you what was your like first uh, memory of like music The first memory of music for me was uh my father and my mother taking me to piano lessons when I was 1. I remember that distinctly and I used to hate it. I used to cry every time I go to piano because it was terrifying. There was an older lady that used to teach me, you know, how to play. And I did it for like maybe two lessons and I never went back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you did you pick up piano afterwards? Later in life. Uh, 
well, I, I, uh, when my aunt, uncle bought a piano from from abroad when he used to travel, and I used to go when I would go visit his house. I would sit there and play. I didn't know what I was playing. I was just playing to make nice sounds in my in my head, you know. So right. nothing that I knew. I didn't know what I was playing. So it was just naturally just whatever sound made made sense and sounded good. I would play. <laughs> that's the that's that's not really when I started playing. That was just messing around. Right. Uh, when I finally picked it up, I actually picked it up on a little toy keyboard and I figured, let me make some music. And I started playing that and I traded that in with a treadmill. I gave my uncle a treadmill. He had a full size piano. And then I started composing from there, like just, you know, learning how to compose with one finger. And then eventually I got to the point where I am. Now. <laughs> right. So, so yeah. you, you moved to the to new york city when you sort of in your formulative days right so he like 11 years old you said so 11 years old yes. so how what are your like sort of in favorite music back then and what sort of music did influence you um i was always interested in in rap music because they had a lot of curses in it mm. because it was such <laughs> a you know such a <laughs> as a child you're always always curious about that and I remember finding this um, uh, uh, cassette tape on the on the ground. It was cracked. You know, we used to go and fix cassette tape. So I picked it up, I took it home, fixed it, and it was an iced tea tape. And I, I listened to it without letting my parents know. And that was interesting. But then, you know, I got into R&B, uh, rock, and then uh, mostly reggae. I mean, I've listened to all sorts of music. I mean, with my cousin... We used to do a lot of rock, uh, you know, Guns N' Roses, uh, you know, Metallica. We used to listen to that when we were in junior high school. And then high school started getting into rap. And then college, I got into a lot of uh, reggae. And, you know, it was it was just a evolving of, of taste in music. I've listened to pretty much every genre and I enjoy every genre for the most part. Right. So um, as a, you know, as a songwriter, as a composer, who do you think you're like, biggest influences are um in terms of influences i love uh, brian mcknight uh i thought he was an amazing artist back in the 90s and uh you know he was he, he used to write a lot of songs that i that caught my attention uh when i started actually singing i was able to sing almost to the keys of mark anthony so he was influenced in the later days uh and then um i actually stopped listening to music <laughs> in all actuality, once I started composing, I don't know. I, I just, I, it just, I don't, I don't want to be in, in my humble opinion, I feel like I'm going to try to mimic somebody that I'm not. So I want to be me versus trying to mimic somebody that I hear or see. So I, it just turned, you know, I, I love those, that type of music. And then all of a sudden I sort of became an introvert in terms of listening to music. Yeah. Right. So uh, when you were back home, when you were a smaller kid, did you knew that <laughs> your dad was like a big singer in Sri Lanka? Did you had an like, had. idea about it? <laughs> yeah, I did because I could, I, everybody that was in the neighborhood, wherever I went, you know, are you Desmond son? Are you Desmond son? They always ask. I never said it. I mean, I mean, obviously after they asked so many times, like, yeah, I am Desmond Rodrigo's son. But it, it was sort of a bother at times, you know. I don't, I didn't want people to bother me about my father's music. I knew he was popular because I've seen him on TV, on commercials, and everything. Uh, and you know, I, I wasn't re really involved. The earliest, well, yeah. So at that age, I knew it was a art. Uh, it was famous, but I I wasn't really. Oh yeah, I am Desmond's son. Hello, how are you doing? No, nothing like that. <laughs> Try to stay in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So your dad was known as the Bruce Lee of Sri Lanka, right? <laughs> yes, he had a he had a song, hit song, Bruce Lee. Uh, and he was known as Sri Lankan Bruce Lee, uh, mainly because everywhere he went, the prime minister loved his songs and his actions on stage. And uh, he wanted him around everywhere he went. Any, any event that he went to, he would invite my father to perform at those events. And, you know, he's he's gotten really popular from that song that was one of the best songs that he had he had many others however mm -hmm. you know they, they, they were all pretty popular but <laughs> that was <laughs> one that sticks out to most people <laughs> once you mention that a lot of Sri Lankans know right so uh so Peter yeah. did the 
uh, of course you got a bit of i mean you got the talent from your father probably right so uh, how yeah. did how did your father influence you on what you're doing now um i've always you know when when i was in high school he used to rehearse with the band at home when i was in college he used to rehearse and i always wanted to sing but the, the, he never gave me the opportunity you know until one day i i had graduated college i came home and he was trying to sing uh, the mark anthony song my baby you and i said hey dad you don't you can't sing that one it's too high let me sing it let me sing it and he finally after i graduated college he said go ahead and then uh that was the first song i ever performed in in front of anybody uh and it was in toronto canada during a, a christmas party and it was about 400 people but you know it was it was fun it was nerve-wracking but fun that was my first experience performing and he let me perform uh he's influenced me in terms of uh after i started singing he actually he actually told me here lay on my belly i was like no dad that's kind of weird but he made me lay on his belly and and teach me how to breathe as he sings so i mean there's been uh you know uh he's been a critic and a helpful hand in, in my career and you know obviously i appreciate all the input i could get from him we agree disagree on a lot of things but musically he he knows it and i'm trying to i guess sort of be there but you know i'm not i'm not trying to get to his level i just want to do what i do as an artist <laughs> right <clears throat> yeah 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 because uh, the style of the 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 style baila because uh, people think it's a it's a simple like it's it's simple way to sing or uh, simple way to do it but it's it's really requires a lot of techniques right because sometimes yeah. some, oh, some yeah. verses can be like you're rapping or it can be yes. in a very fast pace so it's it's a di- it's a different talent for that right you need to have yeah yeah like absolutely it. Absolutely to any artist that's out there the most important thing whether you sing rap po- you do poetry it's all about breathing you know that's what my father's taught me all these years you know it's like if you don't breathe correctly your voice is not going to be and you're not going to be able to put emphasis on certain things yes and baile is not just like rap it's, it's hard even rap yeah i couldn't i would never be able to rap man i'm <laughs> telling you there's certain people out there no way bro <laughs> right So Peter yeah. do you remember your like first public performance? Yes, uh the first public performance. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I I it was in college and uh, I I thought, you know, I, I come from a, a, a performer. I, I'm I'm a I'm a product of a performer. You know, I get on that stage and I vomit. Man, I vomit. uh i couldn't hear myself and and i i hadn't practiced really and it was it, it was the worst experience of my life i mean in front of my college friends and you know during college you know you're trying to impress all the girls and you want to be the man on campus well that, that didn't make me the man on campus at all but it was it was it was an experience and uh it taught me what i need to do on stage or before i get on stage in order to prepare to perform so that was a good a bad experience however you learn from it. right so uh so yeah. how many years ago that you you really uh, started writing your songs composing and got into really making music um i want to say about 15 years ago i really started composing and producing my own because it was so hard to find uh engineers and 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 uh, and composers out here you know mm. if you do find them they're very unreliable so i figured hey listen when i used to go into the studios i used to watch what the uh, the the recording engineers did and how the compositions were made and i just made mental notes and when i came home i started putting some money together bought some equipment here and there and i started just punching one finger at a time initially you know uh, to create the uh, chords and then after a while you, your body starts you you know i don't know how it is when i play the the chords just come i it's just the weirdest thing I, i don't know how to explain it you know i don't sit there and compose meaning writing the the chords down it just naturally comes to me so about 15 years ago i started composing to be honest right so so i can see on the screen you have rods entertainment so can you tell me what's rods entertainment is 
So basically, Rod's Entertainment came from, uh, you know, we've go, gone around performing. My father's done it. And I figured, why not, why not uh, create a company based on it, you know, trying to personalize the entertainment field? You know, like I do a lot of hosting and emceeing, and I try to cater to whoever I emcee and host with and, and make it a personal experience. And it's just not generic. I'm not coming in there like a DJ and I'm spewing a bunch of words and, you know, trying. It, it's more personal. I'm taking it. I'm in, interacting with the audience. And the same with my brother and my father. You know, we tried to make it a little bit more personal and intimate in terms of performances. So that's where Rajan came from. Right. So your brother, you, you sing with your brother as well, right? Yeah, yeah, we we all three of us have performed together. Um, we get hired to do gigs out here, and it's it's a fun time. It's a, sometimes it's rough. I mean, with my brother, we go head to head. You know, we're always bumping heads in terms of ideas and concept. But you know, it's, even though we 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 have arguments and disagreements, we're we're artists, and this is how we deal with it. You know, that's, as long as you come up with a positive with, through that, that's what your learning experience is. You know, so yeah, it's fun and and and. Uh, hard at the same time <laughs> yeah so i i read that you uh of course in new, uh new york and where you're staying there's a big sri lankan community as well right so you yes. get to perform with a lot of events with, for sri lankan yes yes uh so if, if, let's say if uh bati and santos comes out or any band uh, uh let's say they would they would put me out there and just to hype up the crowd and and get everybody going and mc for them You know, it's nothing major. You know, I'm not the headline. I'm just, I'm just going in there. And I remember one of, uh, one of the, one of the people that are that were in the. He, he just came up and was like, "Hey, listen, dude, you have to be a part of every Sri Lankan event. You know, you're like a state." He said this. He said, "You have, you're, you're like the voice of of this community. So you have to be in every event." So I mean, that really spoke to me, saying, "I'm not, I'm not necess- I'm not collecting money from these events in terms of you know emceeing." For the most part, I do it out of the kindness of my heart. I uh, MC a couple of shows here and there, and it's like you know, it, it feels good to know that the community is looking and and appreciating what you do. So yeah, right. So so Peter, have you been uh, having? Did you been looking at what's happening in Sri Lanka now? Uh, in the field of music, have any artists that interest you from Sri Lanka? <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, rap artists that are there that are that are really good. Um, I, I I I I have I don't remember their names. I'm sorry. I, I don't <laughs> study them. Again, I'm I'm very limited in terms of who I listen to. And um, you know, I've I've heard some songs and oh, what's what's his name? Oh my gosh, the guy that sang um, oh, there was a song that was amazing. Um, I I, I used to listen to it on repeat because I loved the way. What is it? Uh, I'm not sure the name of the song, but I love that song. I thought he was really good and very talented. And uh, I would love to work with some of the artists out there, man. It's, it's there's some amazing, amazing talent in the Sri Lankan community. For sure, for sure. As well as America, of course, you know, that's a given. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so um, I was I I uh, was checking your YouTube and you have a couple of videos you put out your your music. Uh, I want to talk about this song, how it ends, because that has a very accompanying, nice video. So can you tell me a little bit about the song and the video? Uh, this is a very sad song, actually. It was um. This was not the original version. The original version was very slow and methodic. This was a re- re- redo. In the original version, uh, I wrote it for a girl that I was falling in love with at that time as I, as I was writing it. And, you know, the song was, this is how we end. And and we ended after we recorded that song. Uh, she She had a great voice and she just basically disappeared off the face of this earth. I haven't heard from her or seen her since. We recorded that song. I I don't know where she is, but yeah, that song is a uh, you know, it's it's uh, close because I, I was really falling for her at the time I was re- uh, recording it and and writing it, and then she just disappeared. Just you know, that's sort of the compilation. What you see on the on the screen there is sort of like the idea 
uh, of that song. Is this how we end? Are you going to leave me once again? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh... <laughs> Because love can be painful, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh man, is it ever? <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you also have a singleish uh, word song, right? Thani V. Uh, that's also came out. When did when did that came out? That was the one I was in Sri Lanka promoting um, three years ago. Uh, right. Tani V came out. I was working with the artist, the rap artist that's on there, uh, Sumedha Manush Mishani. And, uh, and uh, it's, we just sat here and he helped me write it out. And uh, in terms, I was given the idea of what I wanted to say. I, I had composed the melody already. And he just, I just told him, I want to say this. And he would say it. I'm like, no, no, how can you say it in a different way? So, and then we came up with the, you know, I came up with the chorus, he came up with the verses and then he uh, laid down the, yeah. So, I mean, it's just an experiment type of song. You know, Tani, I mean, Versa, you don't want to be alone in this life, you know, without without your heart. So again, going back to the love concept, men have a bit hurt. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, so that was uh, it was it was a fun song to do. We did a whole video for it. Uh, it was it got, it got a nice little following uh, when I did release it. It might have had about fifty to sixty k views in different platforms. All together, but you know, I didn't expect anything back. I just wanted people to hear and enjoy it. It was, it was definitely the music is me. I know, I you know, when you hear my music, you know it's me. I'm coming up with a new, uh, new single song. It's actually in the works. It's called Piazza de Kala, and uh, that's that's going to be a uh, part live and uh, part uh, um, animation. So the animation is in the work right now, and uh, yeah, it, it should be out by April. Right. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah that's, uh, that's my sing second single song. Sorry. Right. Right. Great. Um, I also saw that uh, your YouTube channel, you're trying to build and you putting music plus you put some tech videos as well. You're talking about Tesla and all this. So uh, <laughs> when did you get a Tesla? Because it's it's a really, how is the experience? Uh, it was nerve wracking at first because, you know, I've never had a car that I have to pay that much for ever in life. So that was one, uh, you know, when I was signing those papers, I was really nervous. Uh, but overall, the car has been wonderful. I, I like doing, you know, tech videos once in a while, because I do love technology. I mean, I have Siri in the house, I have, you know, everything. But anyway, uh, the Tesla, I purchased it last year around this time. Uh, exactly. Um, and I picked it up. And, and, you know, I was like, where am I going to charge it? So I had to figure out the charging situation. And, you know, the car is wonderful. I love the autopilot. I drive to Brooklyn every morning and I put on autopilot. The car drives itself. I just had <laughs> to right. sit there. I don't have to worry about anything. Somebody cuts you off. It'll slow down. Go ahead. <laughs> it's really amazing. It's really a wonderful technology. Everybody should have one. I'm telling you. And right. zero emissions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter, I, I notice also your, your kind of... Uh, you're also into Apple, right? So you you love the yes. ecosystem, Apple. I I mean, I've been crazy about it. Also, I've been, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apple, Apple is Apple is definitely a, a great product. Um, I mean, it's expensive yeah. more than anything, but the uh, longevity and, and the use of the product is a lot better than anything else that I've that I've experienced. You know, it lasts a lot longer than anybody any other products on the market, for sure. Yeah, plus plus the the features and the capability that yeah. it provides is amazing compared to other systems, right? Absolutely, absolutely, nothing you could beat, nothing you beat. I'm telling you. I mean, there, my my good friend is a is a, a, a PC guy. You know, he swears by PCs. He would not even touch an Apple. So we always going back and forth, making jokes like your PC sucks. He tells me your Apple sucks. You know, but it's it's all in good fun. But you, to each its own. You know, if it. If it works for you, it works for you. And I'm very comfortable with Apple for sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been, I because I started like, you know, I had to start working from home uh, for, for yeah. because of the COVID. And then I've been spending like so much time trying to set up my workspace the way I want it. And it, it's, <laughs> you know, the Apple, it has to be that aesthetic. It has to be minimalist, you know, that I, I spend so yeah. much time. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, listen. 
it, it, it works. That's the main thing. And it works very simply. That's the main thing. You know, right. you don't have to do too much to make it work. That's what makes it very uh, consumable. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So 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 Peter what's uh, you said there's a song coming up but tell everyone what you're working on and what they, what they can expect from Peter Rodrigo Well so I'm I'm working on this song called Piastra Kala which is a singly song that's my second uh singly song uh in the works the the, uh, the audio and the and the vocals are done I'm just waiting for the video and the and the uh sketch artist to finish and that'll be released in April I'm going to continue working on music. I you know what music just comes to me. I never sit there and plan, okay, I'm going to do this type of song. The song comes to me and I just lay it down. It really is that simple. When I I did a song last year during April, I released it uh, the the song was called uh, Breath of Life. I don't know if you if you saw that yeah. one, but uh it was it was it was meant for COVID and I dedicated it to, it to my mother, God rest her soul. She passed away two years ago from uh, brain cancer. So I mean for everybody that's lost somebody during this crazy times you know that was a uplifting song that I made I mean my uh my hopes and expectations for the future are to continue to perform and entertain and and have people enjoy and listen to some positivity and and about love and life and laughter you know that's that's it I'm not I'm not planning to become famous but I I just want people to hear a uh, something that 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 can tickle their ear and and maybe ca- catch their thoughts. Right. <clears throat> Great. Um what's your message to the viewers uh Peter? I think a lot of Sri Lankans will also will watch this video so Oh for for me I I know I would appreciate all the support that I've gotten in the past and I would appreciate some more support from my Sri Lankan brothers and sisters as well as anybody that's willing to listen. uh to come out and uh you know just give it a like share it with somebody because you never know it'll help somebody in their mind you know uh, if somebody's going through something sharing sharing music music is universal and and it does speak to a deeper soul than than just your visual and your ears so you know people sharing music through who whomever it doesn't matter will definitely help and heal each other a lot better than just having a conversation that's for sure so i mean i, I would hope that they would continue to support me as as well as i continue to support them throughout this time and beyond right peter anybody you want to shout out to yeah mama thank you uh definitely to my mom and uh my family for sticking together throughout that the whole ordeal dealing with my mom and uh you know all the sri lankans and all the people in the world so for real for real like we we've, we've gotten this far let's push through and get back to normal soon hopefully that's for sure that's a shout out i want to give <laughs> right so uh, peter i like like to thank you for joining the podcast i always like to thank you so much i always enjoy i always appreciate when i see another sri lankan in a you know another country and doing great and doing something you know uh, chasing thank their passion so, so i really i really support that so uh, keep making great music and then tell everyone how they can uh, follow you and listen to your music Yeah you can you can uh, google me Peter Rodrigo um my a uh, youtube channel is basement music just type in just google peter rodrigo you find my music on google um i'm on um instagram p pete dot rigo and i'll be on instagram facebook peter rodrigo just friend me i'll friend you back no worries i i have conversation with thousands of people uh, i don't have an issue with anybody contacting me through facebook and uh, you know hopefully we'll get a chance to uh, you get a chance to hear and listen to my music and like it. right so Shana, uh, thank you so much for having me thank you Appreciate peter you. thanks thanks for joining uh, so have a great evening <laughs> stay safe you too appreciated bye guys <laughs>